You're watching Cartel TV and I'm Simone. I've got the latest update of the CX-3 here for review today. And while it looks pretty similar to the previous model on the outside, we'll take a closer look at what's new and what's not so new. Okay, so the specific one I have here is the 2018 Mazda CX-3 in the Max trim. It's the second trim level of four, just a notch above the base model, but it packs some cool features and is actually good enough to be the best bang for the buck. As I already said, the exterior is pretty much the same as the one before the update. You get modern body styling, but not as conspicuous as the Kona or the CHR. The front is the familiar Mazda design with the large grille and the elegant head and fog lights. And the front splitter also adds to the aggression. The side shows these 16 inch wheels, pronounced cladding and somewhat oversized side mirrors. This trim level gets halogen headlamps and tail lamps. I did expect LEDs, but it's not a major drawback. All in all, the CX-3 is a modern looking car. Not bland in any way, but also not as in your face as the Toyota CHR. And I think that this middle ground sits perfectly with Mazda's brand image. Under the hood, you'll find a two litre four pot sky active engine. It produces 190 kilowatts and 192 newton meters of torque and officially consumes 6.1 litres combined of fuel. That fuel figure sounds pretty optimistic, but Mazda's sky active tech is awesome and it does manage to hold its own against its turbocharged counterparts from the whole downsizing craze. Behind the wheel, you'll notice some differences when compared to the older model. 1,282 kilograms of weight makes the engine sufficient. It can give the impression it's struggling under heavy acceleration, especially when going uphill, but this is more about the sound than the actual lack of competence. The engine in this car is paired with a good, reassuring six-speed automatic, although there is a manual version available. Its shifts are seamless and reasonably fast, and it's obviously aimed at giving relaxed, effortless performance, rather than lightning-fast accelerations. Top torque is available from 2,800 revs. That's not as low as in some turbocharged models, but the increased compression ratio of the Sky Active engine does provide enough low rev push. Okay, now for the actual changes. Steering is noticeably better, and the amazing G-vectoring system is a great addition. The improvement comes from small upgrades in several different places. For example, suspension still has the McPherson up front and torsion beam at the back, but the setup is different. Not that the previous model was bad in any way, but this one is more responsive and equally comfortable. It really handles like a small hatchback, which is a praiseworthy feature for an elevated vehicle. Brakes are great. The front has 280mm ventilated discs and the rear 281mm solid ones. They may not sound like much, but in a small, lightweight car, they are more than satisfying. I also like the low sitting position. Aside from giving ample headroom, it also makes you feel more in action while driving. This is often great for driving feel, but bad for outside visibility. Not in the CX-3. Visibility is great, and I guess I wouldn't really be able to say that about most small crossovers. But does this defeat the purpose for people who want to feel like they're driving an SUV? Off-road. Okay, it's not really meant to be used as a workhorse of a car in the outback, but the CX-3 is reasonably capable. I was pleasantly surprised by its planted feel off-road. Many cars of its size would jump and jitter on bad roads, but the CX-3 gives a rather reassuring feel. On the inside, you'll notice that the new steering wheel is covered in leather and is tilt and telescopic adjustable. Another novelty is this new seven inch display. It supports Mazda's infotainment system, which is pretty responsive and also boasts some nice graphics. However, it does lack Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Strange, having in mind that it is aimed at the younger buyers. Noise reduction is also noticeable in the latest model, although I did notice that there is still some sound, especially from the tires. Front seats are both reasonably supportive and comfortable. What I find weird is there is no central armrest. Now, you don't notice how much you use it until you drive a car without it. The rear seats are not as good as the front. There's not much room in the back for adults. The CX-3 is just under 4.3 metres long, so I didn't really expect loads of room, but this, this is tight. Headroom is also not great. In short, if you're driving adults in the back, the CX-3 is probably not the best choice. The boot is not very big either. With the seats up, you have 264 litres. This can grow to 1,174 litres with the rear seats folded and filled up to the roof. These things being said, I have to say that the CX-3 is not really designed to be a family car. It's more for couples. Okay, time to stop complaining. Being a small city car, it's important to have enough storage space for small things, and the CX-3 has it. Even though the boot isn't really large, there are still plenty of storage components. With front cup holders, front and rear door bottle holders, front door pockets, and of course, a decent glove box. As a whole, the interior looks fantastic, and my only issue would be rear leg room. But this issue is common across most of the brands in this category, and it's not gonna be too big a problem unless you plan on driving adults in the back seats very often. 
unexpectedly, the CX-3 is a pretty safe car. It was safe even before the update, but the facelift added even more safety features. You get Smart City Brake Support, which is their version of AEB, with a camera and a bunch of sensors and works up to 80 km per hour. This is a good improvement over the 50 km per hour one that the previous model boasted. This one also has a rear view camera, blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert, cruise control, ABS, dynamic stability control, emergency brake assist, fuel launch assist, rear parking sensors, traction control and whiplash minimising front seats. This is basically an update that added a lot of safety benefits and loads of minor tweaks that add up to a considerable improvement in drive. All in all, this was already a good car in its class and now it's a lot better to drive. Prices start at just under $23,000 and this front wheel drive max in auto will cost you around $27,000, which is actually pretty good. The base trim level, called Neo, really does lack a lot of perks that other manufacturers have spoiled customers with, but the Max is much better. Sure, opting for the highest two trim levels will give you some flashy features, such as digital instrument cluster, but who cares really? Going for higher than Max is just a matter of preference, not necessity. Thanks for watching Cartel TV. Now, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to our channel. So, the Mazda CX-3. It's in the same category as the Subaru XV, as well as new contenders like the Toyota CHR and Hyundai Kona. And there are so many cars in this category, surely you have your favorite. Let us know in the comments below.